Hi, my name is Christian Isabel and I am a Senior Technical Support Specialist here at Expo. Welcome back to the series of videos about automation using Expo equipment. Now that our physical connection is established between the LTB8 platform and the controlling workstation, we will use various tools to validate the link and exchange text commands. For physical connection details, see the previous video in this series. For this video, we will use the Ethernet connection or Telnet TCP IP connection. Take note that you might require configuring the firewall on each machine to allow them to see each other and exchange data. Communication between both machines is done using the standardized protocol. This protocol is called SCPI, more commonly called Skippy. Skippy is a text-based protocol that allows a controller to send commands and queries to an instrument. The syntax is kept to a minimum and allows a great deal of flexibility in the data exchange between both controller and instrument. Before going any further, let's see the Skippy protocol in action using a standard command. To show this, we will use a commonly available tool, which is a Telnet client application. Using the controller, we will open a DOS prompt and open a Telnet connection. At the command prompt, enter Telnet and then open IP address or workstation name in the port 5024. You should get a trying to connect, connected to toolbox IQS manager and a ready prompt response. You are now ready to send Skippy commands. One of the most commonly used Skippy command is star IDN question mark, which is used to get the identification of the instrument at the specified address. Let's enter it and see the result. This indicates that the connection is established and the instrument is responding properly. Using the third parameter, the user or an automated sequence can validate that we are talking to the desired instrument. Take note that every Skippy command that starts with a star is a command that every instrument should implement if they follow the Skippy standard. The Skippy standard has evolved over the years and has been stable for many years. Skippy and other open standards on test instruments are now under the control of the IVI Foundation Open Consortium. Visit IVIFoundation.org for complimentary technical information. The LTB8 device is a platform that can contain multiple instruments and each of them can be addressed individually. To get the address of each module, we can send a command that will list all modules and their address. The command is int full. Sending this query, you should get the response like The number following the model of the module is the logical instrument number that we specified in the instrument control configuration tool in the last video. Using this number, or LINS, you can send commands directly to this module. For example, setting this command will ask the status of the logical instrument at address 3, in this case a power meter. Please note that every module command will need to be prefixed with LINS X, where X stands for the logical instrument number targeted by the command. The list of Skippy commands specific to a module is available in a dedicated section of each module user guide. Please consult expo.com under products menu for the details. For now, we've used only Skippy queries, meaning that every command was ending with a question mark. In the Skippy protocol, the controller will expect an answer when sending a query. The Skippy protocol supports commands for which the controller is not expecting an answer. For example, star rst is a simple command, not a query. As you can see, there is no reply to this command. Finally, commands and queries can be specified using parameters. For example, if we wanted to change the time on the instrument, we could send the following command from the controller, which would set the time at 9 hours, 45 minutes, 12 seconds AM. In some situations, you might not get the answer you're looking for from the instrument. There is a tool available for monitoring what commands and queries are received on the LTB8. This tool is called Skippy Telnet Monitor and is available in the Test Tools tabs in Toolbox. Let's open this tool and see how it reacts when we send the star IDN question mark query. Another way of doing automation is to use programming. Today, one largely used software language is C Sharp and the Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, to program in this language is Microsoft Visual Studio. Microsoft provides a free community addition to the Visual Studio IDE,
To get the latest release of this IDE, make a search for Visual Studio Express in your favorite web search engine. To facilitate the first steps using automation using C Sharp, Axel has developed a basic example to get started. This sample is called Axel Remote Control Demo and is available from Axel website under the support menu in Software Downloads and PC Software. Once the X4 Remote Control Demo is downloaded and installed on the controller, you should open the folder containing the application and the source code. This folder is typically located in the Current Users Documents folder and subfolder X4 Remote Control Demo. Launch the demo Skippy C Sharp.net application. You will get a single window application that allows you to establish a connection with the X4 device. Select the Telnet Radio button and enter the IP address in the text box next to the radio button. Finally, press the Initialize button. If the connection is properly established, you will get access to Step 2 and Step 3 in the window. Pressing the star IDN question mark button will behave the same way as we have previously seen using the Telnet console. Pressing Full Catalog button will invoke the INSCAT full query. The last section of the application allows you to send direct queries using the write and read button and commands using the write button. You could install the demo Skippy C Sharp.net application directly on the LTB8. In this situation, you could use the ActiveX method of control. Take note that in this case, you would need the other Skippy monitoring tool from the Expo toolbox. Its name is IC Monitor and is available in the Test Tools tab. You would also need to change the instrument configuration to ActiveX. Select the local host radio button in the demo application and click the initialize button. From there, simply use the application as if using Telnet. This code example is just an introduction to automation, but you can view the source code and use it as a starting point for programming your own test sequence. Going through the source code of this application will be the subject of the next video. Another tool we can use is the Measurement and Automation Explorer or MAX from National Instruments. This tool is included in NIVISA or NI488.2 installation packages. Consult the NI website to get the latest version of these tools for your current operating system. For our demonstration, we will use the MAX from the NIVISA kit on a Windows 10 controller station. Launch Max by going in the Windows menus under National Instruments Applications. Right click on Devices and Interface Item and select Create New. Select Visa TCP IP Resource and press Next. Select Manual Entry or Raw Socket Item and press Next. Enter the workstation name or IP address. Then enter the port number, which in our case is 5025, and press Next. Enter LTB8 as an alias for this instrument. Entering an alias is optional, so this step can be skipped. Finally, press Finish. The newly added device should be listed under Network Devices with the full name and alias, if applicable. Right-click on the device and select Launch Visa Test Panel. In the Configuration tab, go to the I.O. Settings and uncheck All Termination Methods checkbox. Then select the Input Output tab at the top of the Test Panel window. You now have a TCP IP raw socket link established to talk to DLTB8, just as we did using the Telnet console and remote control demo. Press the Query button and see the result in the text panel below. You're now able to send Skippy commands to an Expo device. If you have questions or comments, do not hesitate to contact Expo support using this address, support at Expo.com. Until next time, take care.